What's up, y'all? We are back again with another video. Uh, got my coffee, and what you're about to see here is a tier list. So, I recently watched Black Panther Wakanda, and with that, I think that's supposed to be the end of phase four. So, I decided that it should be a good time to go ahead and rank these phase four Marvel projects, including the uh, TV shows as well as the movies. And um, what else? This one is showing uh, Secret Invasions, but I think Secret Invasion is supposed to be a Phase Five project, so that's not gonna get ranked on here. Um, also, there's construction going on outside the house right now, so there you go. If you hear that, then I apologize, but really didn't have a better time to make this video. Got other stuff to do today. Uh, if you don't hear that, then yeah i guess i bought a pretty good mic um also the reviews for black panther as well as all of these other projects they're on my tiktok they're also on my instagram i'll put the links down in this video as well as in the uh, comments or not the comment section the uh, description below and yeah man let's get started so look right here we got moon knight uh, S tier, A, B, C, and D tier. Um, Moon Knight was one of those that I was real skeptical on, and I didn't know how it was gonna go. Right? Um, it was something new. All the only thing I knew about Moon Knight was that like he was the Marvel version of Batman. But saw this and I'm like, that's completely beyond the case. The only thing he probably has similar to Batman is his multiple personality disorders, or there's multiple personalities. I don't know what that disorder is or if it's even called that. So I have to retract that statement. But as far as this show goes, Moon Knight was phenomenal. It was, I was not expecting that. The acting was good. The acting was great actually. And yeah, if I'm being honest, the only detriment to this was maybe that end scene where everybody was speculating that there was supposed to be, or well, spoilers by the way, but everybody was speculating that there was supposed to be this third personality, which they hint at, but didn't show us until like a end credit scene, right? So that's probably the only shot at that, or the only spot on its resume or whatever. Um, if I had to put it somewhere, I'll probably put it at. I'll put it at S tier because that's one of those shows that I really ride for. Moon Knight was definitely a very good show to me. Now, next up is Eternals. Um, Eternals was, wasn't was well received, if I'm being honest. It was very lore heavy. Um, the characters, in my opinion, I didn't think had any staying power. They kind of seemed random at times. And it felt like they... They didn't really, what's the word? They didn't really have any like emotional impact on me. And not a lot of that can be, there's not a lot that really can be said about Eternals. Um, if I'm being honest, I probably need to watch it again because there's not a lot that I remember of it, but I did watch it just because it was a Marvel property. But if I'm being real, Eternals was probably a C for me. Yeah, Eternals was a C for me. Um, Black Widow, the movie that was riddled in controversy, uh, came out right at the start of this pandemic when all the movie theaters were closing. So they had to release it on uh, Disney Plus, which was uh, controversial in itself because all those royalties didn't go to Scarlett Johansson and that so she had to sue and all that big problem but as far as the story goes it was decent I mean it was as decent as a Black Widow movie could get but my thing is I didn't think that that should have been in phase four that should have been that should have been at least in the Captain that should have been like right after Captain America Winter Soldier or something like that right because it gives us context on what she was doing in between that and uh, Endgame and Infinity War and all that, right? So I think that this movie is kind of misplaced. Um, 
I will put it in C tier. Um, yeah, I'll put it in C tier. Now, Doctor Strange, Madness, Multiverse of Madness, was actually really dope, but I think that they could have gone a little bit crazier in the madness part of the multiverse, right? But essentially, this falls down on you seeing Wanda Vision and knowing Wanda's character and what she's been through, right? So if you haven't seen that, then going into this, going into this movie, you would try to figure out like, why is Wanda a bad guy all of a sudden? Did she help stop Thanos and do all this stuff? But there's a complication to that, right? And I feel like it's a good thing that this carries over from WandaVision, but it's also a bad thing that you have to have that continuity um, aspect in order to understand Wanda's character and what she's going through. Now, they kind of do a better job of that. As or They kind of do an okay job of that, if I remember correct myself, of displaying how Wanda is feeling about the stuff that happened to her as a result of Endgame and Infinity War. But I think it could have been conveyed a little bit better, if I'm being honest. So not the worst movie, that's for sure. I would put it at probably B. I put it at B tier. Uh, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. The biggest blight on this show is more than likely its villain. I did not care for that villain whatsoever. That villain was inconsequential to the everything going on. But I did care about is the politics that went on around everything that happened after the blip. Because that's where a lot of these shows take place is after the blip. So, in that aspect, I like. Um, I also like the aspect that they name out the first Captain America. And it wasn't Steve Rogers. It was uh, the black Captain America. But because of America's history, they weren't going to allow that to happen, right? And it, talks, it, t it touches some deep um, topics, deep controversial, to not even controversial really, but deep topics that a lot of people don't want to have conversations to. But that villain and then trying to do a redemption arc for who I thought was going to be the supposed main villain is... um. It kind of waned its way around for me. So, if I had to put it on the tier, I would put it on C tier, if I'm being real. Yeah, I put it on C tier. Um, Hawkeye, another show that I think they misused the villain a little bit because everybody was speculating, and spoilers again, but everybody was speculating that. Um, Kingpin was going to be brought into the Marvel Universe and it was and what was good about it was it was the Kingpin from the Daredevil side the Daredevil show on Netflix so everybody was real hype about that now what blights it was um the fact that they miss I feel like they misused Kingpin's character because he was brought in and then made to suddenly be killed off real fast. And I was like, man, I don't know if I like that. I think they could have did maybe um, something totally different. Maybe get him put in jail, but not killed, right? But I guess that's the direction they wanted to go. But they did say that he was going to be back. And I'm wondering how they're going to explain this because it's going to be... They're going to, have to pull something out the butt because it's not, I don't, it's not going to be a pretty sight. But as far as the show goes, I liked it more than the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. But I don't think I liked it enough to put it in A tier. So I'm going to put it in B tier. Uh, what if it did some? What if did some ama an amazing job of telling these stories that aren't implicit to the canon of the Marvel Cinematic Universe but they but it's also a fun way to explore different possibilities that could stem from circumstances that happen in the Marvel Cinematic Universe so like the stuff with Black Panther becoming Star-Lord um, 
what if zombies stuff like that right and i actually like this show for you know getting creative like that and doing an animated style because it doesn't the not a lot of people take animation seriously in fact it's for kids but animation done right can convey a lot more emotion than a lot of times what live action can do and if you want to look at an example look at the lion king live action that did so bad so what if and i'm gonna reorganize all this by the way not there's gonna be levels to c tier b tier a tier right now i'm just putting it on the tier just to get my thoughts together and then i'm gonna organize it based on those tiers um what if i actually liked a lot and i don't think a lot of people liked it as much as i liked it so i put it in a tier yeah i'm gonna put it in a tier shang chi i I actually love this movie one because it had the representation in it and two because the action scenes in this was just very very dope and i and it's, it, it connects to a lot of stuff like there's stuff in here that connects to she hold that will also connect to um what else i think kind of connects to um Eternals as well that connects to another another show in here as well but I can't think of the name right now I think it connects to Moonlight but right now it's she, Shang-Chi is actually one of the better movies of the Phase 4 uh, project and honestly if I had to put it anywhere I put it at the top of A yeah I put it at the top of A um yeah Spider-Man No Way Home. First time I saw this movie, I absolutely loved it. I loved everything about it. I loved how there was a sense of finality and, well, almost a sense of finality, but I like how they handled the character of Peter Parker in this movie. And the cameos was just a touch, but I like how they handled the cameos as well. Um, I think I went on to say that this movie was really, really good. And honestly, seeing it now and thinking about it, there's there were maybe some flaws, but no, there were some flaws. But it's not enough that it would change me from not putting it in S tier because Spider Man No Way Home was just really, really good to me. Uh, WandaVision, <laughs> do I need to say more? WandaVision was in S tier to me, WandaVision was just. I was skeptical at how it was going to do because of the first episode or the first three episodes, but I liked that direction that they took, and it was bold. I don't think a lot of people were doing that at that time. So it was very creative, the story between Wanda and Vision and how it introduces mutants and stuff like that, and Wanda's grief. It has some of the dopest lines in here, bro. So, yeah, Wanda Vision is here. Loki. right above what if and yeah Loki's right above what if just because of the thought of introducing the multiverse I think Loki was the first one to introduce the multiverse but I think it was supposed to come out before WandaVision but you know scheduling and all that COVID happened but Loki did a very good job and I didn't think that they could do a good job of redemp doing a redemption arc for this character. I thought they did a, a, a better job of doing it and for uh, the third Thor, right? For Ragnarok. But man, did they do a good job right here. And I absolutely love that show. Gotta move on. Um, next up, She-Hulk. And She-Hulk Floating between B and C. I put it in. Mm, nah. Because if I'm being real, yeah. I'll put it at C. Because She Hulk has its moments where it was good and it was actually funny. 
But there are times where it's like, okay, these jokes aren't really hitting that well. Um, they lost me when they did the whole story plot thing and it ended up amounting to nothing. Um, the third, the fourth wall breaks, some of them were hidden and some of them were funny. And others were like, ah, that didn't really work with me. So, but overall, they, um, they tried something. It was something different. And sometimes it landed, sometimes it did. And it was a lot more times that it didn't land than it did land for me. So I would honestly have to put it at C tier if I'm being real. Um, Miss Marvel. I honestly realized that Miss Marvel wasn't a show made for me. Just like She Hulk was made for me as well. Um, Miss Marvel was kind of made for a different de age demographic than I. And some of the uh, the villains were trash to me. The villains did not really do it for me as far as like what their motivations were and why they were doing the things they were doing. And then the transfer antagonist that shipped over to one of the people that Kamala had a crush on. That was, and he wasn't really that very antagonistic to me. So it was like, ah, I'm just not feeling it, bro. So. Honestly, this is probably the only one. Yeah, I put it. It's not horrible because I there's. I don't think none of these are horrible, but there's always a ranking in between, and I don't think D. I consider rank D as horrible, and not not. I don't think all, any of these are horrible. Um, for Love and Thunder, I thought was pretty decent, pretty funny. Um, kind of your typical. It, it gave me four Ragnarok vibes. And I actually love four Ragnarok, but um, it actually had a little bit more story to it. Well, not a little bit more story, but a little bit more depth to it as far as the story goes. Um, the action scenes were actually pretty good. CGI was pretty good. Um, supporting the side characters, I actually like the Valkyrie Queen. A lot more in this movie than I did in um in Ragnarok, um and the fight of four and uh, Jane coming together and you know having to talk it out, especially after the events that happened in uh, in game. It's actually pretty cathartic. So, I'd be honest. I'd probably put it in A tier. It was it was okay. It wasn't amazing, but it was okay. No, if I did that, yeah, I have to I have to put it in B tier. My bad. Yeah, put it in B tier, just above. Nah, in between. Okay, so there's that, and then finally, Black Panther: Wakanda Forever. Now, this movie, obviously fresh on my mind, I think that it was actually a really dope movie. Um, the tribute to Chadwick Boseman and T'Challa in this movie was done exceptionally well. Um, I feel like they handled Shuri as a character and bringing her to be a main character. Uh, they handled that very well, considering the fact that they had a whole a totally different script written out uh, for Chadwick Boseman's character, but you know, life happens and I think what they did right here was really really good um I already listed some complaints in my review over on TikTok and uh, Instagram so check those out and um if I had to be honest I would put this probably at the top of A tier borderline S tier if I'm being real um yeah that'll pretty much do it um i need to reorganize and stuff so like c tier um i think black widow is definitely above eternals um show wise yeah i'm gonna put eternals over yeah if i'm organizing it movie wise so Spider-Man No Way Home. 
S tier. I got Black Panther above Shang Chi. Uh, Multiverse of Madness above for Love and Thunder, and then Black Widow over Eternals. As show wise, I love Moon Knight. I really love Moon Knight. So Moon Knight will go above One Division. One Division's right there, close second. Uh, Loki above What If, because I actually liked What If. Um, Hawkeye, good where it is. Falcon and the Winter Soldier, definitely above She-Hulk, definitely above Miss Marvel. And yeah, man, that's pretty much it. Um, let me know what your thoughts are, how you ranked it. Um, if you agree with some of these, let me know in the comments down below. If you don't, tell me what your records would be. Um, yeah, like the video, follow me if you want to. If not, then that's cool, man. I still love y'all. And yeah, dog. I'll see y'all in the next one.